You're listening to Something Cheeky, a collection of podcasts where two sisters discuss TV, books, and movies with just enough irreverence and far too many pop culture references. Welcome to Something Cheeky, where we discuss the TV series Vikings. I'm Nikki. I'm Rosanna. Well, I've watched the entire series. Rosanna has only watched up to what we're covering today, which is Season 1, Episode 7, A King's Ransom. In this episode, the English king learns that you can't outsmart a Northman. Well, one Northman in particular. You could probably outsmart Rollo. <laughs> So, Rosanna, what was your reaction to this episode? I was surprised by a lot of this episode. Okay. I I didn't really know what to expect going into it, so pretty much everything was a surprise. (laughs) (laughs) I did find myself, as I have the last several episodes, going back and forth on Floki. Oh, okay. I just can't decide if I like him or not. The fact that he laughs like a hyena is slightly annoying. It's it's annoying, but then also, like, sometimes he'll say something or have this look. So, yeah, I don't know how I feel about Floki. He's he's kind of weird and creepy and a little dark yeah. sometimes, but then also sometimes I think that he really knows what's going on. And the whole thing, the whole conversation that he had with Rolo about Odin being mad at at Rolo, that just felt like authentic to me like that he was really worried about that he seems very involved in the faith yes it's very important to him very real to him yes seems like he certainly lives his life in a way that he thinks the gods would want yeah and i mean whether you agree or not there's something to be said for that Mm -hmm. kind of devotion to something that you have no no proof of it's It's actual faith. Yeah, we see so much about the Christians and their faith and how it affects their entire lives. Yes. And while we hear stories about the gods, the Norse gods, it's it's not connected. It doesn't seem connected with everything that people do. Right. For everyone, the way that they, that the Christians are portrayed. Yes. But for Floki, it really does. Yeah, exactly. He he is incredibly devout. Yeah, I, you know, and, and sometimes just the way he talks or the expression on his face, I just like him. But sometimes he creeps me out. I really loved Lagertha's scene with Siggy. Oh, yeah. When she when she came and said she wanted to serve her. I loved the way Lagertha talked to her. I mean, she was really respectful. I, of course, loved Lagertha the entire episode. I thought she yeah. was great. And I, and I did feel like we didn't get enough apple stand in this one. There's never enough apple stand. It's true. There's never enough. But there was hardly any in this. Well, yeah. that's because we hardly got any Catholic at at all. That's true. I just, I love the way he talked to Lagertha. I love the way he treated Siggy. I just like him a lot. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, there definitely wasn't enough of him. And there was way too much of sweaty King Curly hair. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Sweaty King Curly here. <laughs> he, ex- except every once in a while, though, during this episode, when he was, when the Vikings were there with him and he was talking to them or listening to them, he would laugh or smile. And half the time his smile was like a grimace. But then the other half of the time, I think he was actually amused. Oh. Some of the times. So, I don't know. I didn't hate him as much. Until the end when he declared a blood feud, basically. Well, and then when he gave them a bunch of empty boxes. Oh, man. I was like, what, are you serious? He brought that on himself. You just killed your brother. I hope you know that. And I don't know if he was testing them to see if they were really serious. And maybe because he... But, I mean, he heard the story about all the priests that got killed, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. these guys are not messing around. I felt like he didn't have as much care for his brother as, for example, Rolo does about... Rolo. As Rolo does about Rolo? Sorry, Ragnar (laughs) does about Rolo. Rolo really cares about Rolo. (laughs) He really does. That's true. (laughs) I agree with that. Ragnar is much more devoted to Rolo than it appeared that the king was to his brother. One example was when they came back and said that the brother had been captured and he says, and my brother's dead. And somebody says, he's not dead. And he's like, well, he's defeated. (laughs) Like, that's all that Which matters. is the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Him. He'd already written him off at that point, it seems like. Which is crazy, because in the scene that the brother and the king were together, he seemed affectionate. But I guess that was just because he was there to help him out, and it was convenient, mm-hmm. maybe. I always want to compare him to, to someone else, but I'm not quite sure. The king or the brother? With. The king. Mm. As far as seeming... He doesn't seem like a sociopath at all, but just self-important. Oh my gosh, so much. Yeah. I mean, he just kills people all the time. <laughs> Threw one of his people in the pit of snakes. Yeah. 
just because they were afraid of dying. That's, uh, yeah. That's ironic. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? You're afraid of dying, so I'm going to throw you in a pit of snakes? Kind of. I mean, a little bit. Yeah. Irony's hard to define. <laughs> it'd be funnier if he was if he threw him, it'd be more ironic if he threw him in the pit of snakes to get help him get over his fear of death. <laughs> that would be ironic. <laughs> also, That's true. it wouldn't work. Also... <laughs> <laughs> also, he would just die. <laughs> uh, what was your favorite quote from this episode? Uh, my favorite quote was by Lagertha, uh, and she's talking to Bjorn when Siggy comes in. Um, Lagertha, okay, so Bjorn says to Lagertha, uh, sh- her husband tried to kill my father. You're just going to, mm-hmm. like, let her in? Is that what's happening? <laughs> That's a direct quote. <laughs> <laughs> no, not 90s really. It's Bjorn. <laughs> oh um, my god, I can't believe you're letting her in. <laughs> but so Lagatha's response is, talking about Earl Haroldson, if he had succeeded, I would be standing where Siggy is now. So what would you like me to say to her? Nice. And it's and it's a, it's said so perfectly because you can see Bjorn's like uh thoughts. <laughs> I mean you can mm-hmm, see churning. Yeah. his brain working where he's like, <laughs> you know what? I would never talk to my mother that way. I would never talk to her if she was in that position in that way and say she's not welcome. And so I think it shows that Lagertha is a sympathetic person and also a really good um, teaching mother. Yeah, it's great parenting. Yeah, she teaches as she goes. And that Bjorn is smart enough to, instead of just mouthing off and being like, well, I don't care. It's not you. It's her. You know, he actually right. considers it and realizes that that's a perspective he needs to look from. Mm-hmm. And then he asks Siggy to sit down. And I just, I really loved that scene. I really loved Lagertha in that scene. I loved that with one line, she taught him perspective and compassion. Yes! She's so good. And the way she handled um, the the couple with the baby. Oh, that I was thought so that was, good. Yes. I just, she's so great. And and she never at any point before now seemed like she had any ambition for herself or for Ragnar to be in a in a position of power. But right. she's very good at it. Yeah, she seems like a natural leader. Definitely. And and like a mediator. Yeah, very diplomatic. Yes, very diplomatic. I, I love her so much. And I was so yeah. sad at the end. I'm sure we'll talk about that later. But yeah, I love her so much. Before we get into the action... I had one clarification from our last episode. Okay. We wanted to know if Vikings had multiple spouses. Oh, yeah. If they pra- practiced polygamy. And I looked, from what I looked up, it is not clear. There oh. are um, references to a bunch of men sleeping with other women besides their wife. There's some thoughts that polygamy existed. There's nothing definite. There's a theory that one reason there were so many foreign raids was to get more women because there was a shortage because elite men were marrying more than one woman at a time, or at least being in a relationship with more than one. Mm-hmm. So they had to get more women there. And so that's why they raided. They were actually going there to steal women and bring them back. I don't like that theory. <laughs> <laughs> not that me liking or not liking gives it any more substantiality, but mm-hmm. I don't like that for a couple reasons. One, the idea that men are marrying or claiming more than one woman. Mm-hmm. And then I also don't like the fact that they're stealing women (laughs) that don't want to go with them and then saying, why don't you just come with me and marry me and have my kids because we don't have enough women here and you're just going to be okay with that. I don't like that either. There's a theory that some of the women, the reason there's so much kind of Viking DNA spread around that part of the world is wasn't always because of raping and pillaging and all that. But that some women actually wanted to be with Viking men because they were cleaner and they took better care of themselves than the men in their country. Huh. It's a theory. Uh, It's kind of a a far-fetched one. I mean, they do spend a lot of time in the water. (laughs) And their hair and beards are a big deal, too. That's true. Well, like, one of them, um, I've noticed a couple of times, had jewelry in his beard. Yeah. They wear, you know, decorations. Mm-hmm. It's it's his formal beard. <laughs> beard just gonna dress it up a little bit, a little yeah. shiny rock or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I I could see too, and maybe this is just because I don't 
I don't know a lot about this time period, but could it be too that the Vikings went to other places to find women, not just because they didn't have enough women because men were marrying too many of them, but m- maybe they didn't survive as well because the, you know, maybe, maybe. The, cl- the climate, maybe childbirth, you know, a, a lot of different reasons. Yeah, childbirth killed off a lot of people. Yeah, maybe, maybe they, and since they were so far away, it seems, than a lot of these other places, that's how they brought more people in. They had to go get them. Mm. Importing people, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Big business. <laughs> Importing people. Yeah, so I don't know. It's interesting theories. There's another clarification, which I don't have much clarification on, really. But we wondered about virginity. Uh-huh, yeah. For the women, and if that was a big deal. So part of the marriage ritual, it turns out, has the woman going in to some kind of sauna-like thing and washing away her maidenhood, basically. How oh. they considered it. So it seems like virginity was a big deal. However, a lot of Viking culture has been written by it's from the christian view by the Mm, english mm -hmm. and so there are things that could have been kind of added in or interpreted incorrectly or just written differently because they didn't agree with it right yeah there there are a lot of things that are hard to tell but we do know that the you know paternal line is always important right in in most societies and so it seems like having a a virgin when you marry her and also a woman that does not sleep with other men is really important. Well, and also, you know, we saw the argument that Lagertha dealt with about the man saying that the baby wasn't his. So apparently infidelity at least right. is an issue, whether the virginity also is or not. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But just for the women. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. I would be totally cool with additional wives. I told my husband we could have an underwife if I didn't have to do any housework ever again. I would love a wife. Yeah. Or I, I wouldn't mind also if it was a, a husband, just a third mm-hmm. person to help out. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> you make dinner every once in a while. You do the laundry. <laughs> you stay home, take care of the house. I'll go to work and my husband will go to work. And then <laughs> third marriage partner, you take care of the house. <laughs> Ed would laugh at me if he heard this because for the housework part, because he actually does most of the housework. Ah, so maybe he right would now. like a partner. <laughs> yeah. He'd probably partner. get more out of it than I would. Yeah, I'm just saying. That's, I mean, I don't know. I'm not like anti or pro polygamy. It would be nice to have more help, is all I'm, I'm pro saying. Housekeeper. I'm yes. definitely pro housekeeper. I need an Alice. <laughs> I'm pro free housekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> we need robots. Yeah, I actually make my children do most of the work around the house now, though. Well, I'm sure they make most of the mess around the house. It's true. And it's not like they're, you know, two and four. They're the two girls that still live at home are in middle school. There's no reason yeah. I should have to wash every dish. That is true. Right? I don't use every dish. <laughs> Let's get into the action. Okay. Like you were talking about Lagertha Holt's court. Mm-hmm. She basically saves a woman and her child. I'm not sure what kind of punishment would have been meted out. I think death is a a pretty good uh, guess. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm glad they didn't kill the child. That was good. Yeah. I thought that Lagertha's explanation was pretty genius. Oh my gosh. Talk about just coming up with something on the fly. Which is one really nice reason to have so many gods with so many alternative names. That's true. <laughs> Anyone that has a name that sounds similar to a god, she'd That's be true. able to use that excuse. And And also about this scene... Did the wife not say that all three of them slept in the same bed? Mm-hmm. What is that? What? What? I just, I've got nothing on that. It's its not clear if she meant that there was another threesome, which apparently is a running theme. And even, and so if there was, he should just shut his mouth about it. Mm-hmm. He was obviously a willing participant, if that's what it was. And by bringing this, he's just made the fact that he can't father a child news to everybody in the town. Yeah. Which is usually something that's looked down upon, it seems like, in societies like this. Questions his manhood that he can't father a child. You'd think if she finally got pregnant in one way or the other, that he would be glad that it's proving that he can father a (laughs) child and not say Mm -hmm. anything about it. Um... Because there's not really any way to put the blame on her. Right. I mean, you can't do it either way. You couldn't say. So, yeah, he was really dumb to bring it up at all. 
Lagatha's court turns into the Maury Povich show with paternity tests. <laughs> yeah. Who's the father? All right, here's the deal, dude. You're not the father, but your baby's a demigod. So, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So. <laughs> so since we had such such split scenes, mm-hmm. we're going to talk about everything that happened to Kattegat first. Okay. And then we'll get to Northumbria. So in another scene, Siggy offers her service to Lagatha. Were you happy to see that we're going to not only see Siggy more, but that she's going to be assisting Lagatha? During the last episode, when the Earl was killed, I wasn't sure how I felt about Siggy. I thought she was very smart to call Earl Ragnar Earl Ragnar. Oh, yeah. I thought that was really smart. And I didn't know if we were going to see her anymore. I- I don't really love the whole thing with Rolo, but then I also think that maybe she felt like she didn't have any other options anyway. But then when she came to Lagertha and was very, not demure, but what, what sort of very... She kind of demure to... I, I suppose. Meek. Meek, yes. She came, So she comes to Lagertha and she's meek and she says, I'd like to serve you. I liked her in that scene. And I really love that Lagertha said, you and your daughter are under my protection. Um, mm-hmm. um, but here's the thing with Siggy. I worry about if she's going to be married to Rolo, which is, I mean, that's where that was going, right? Yeah. Okay. Sounded like it. So she's agreed to marry him, but they're not married, right? We, we don't know. They haven't said anything about okay. it. So, so let's say she does. Let's say that is the plan. But uh, I, uh, this is very hard for me. Because it's like all over the place. <laughs> Rolo cares about Lagertha, so he would never want to hurt her. But Rolo wants to be in Ragnar's place, which means Siggy would be kicking Lagertha out. So does Siggy know that that's the plan? Is she trying to be nice to Lagertha to get in with her so she can, like, mess with her from the inside? Or does she really just want to serve her? Or is she trying to get in with Lagertha? Just to give herself one more layer of protection. That too. I don't know. I this. I I would like to believe the best in <laughs> in people, <laughs> which is hard to do on this show. So yeah, I the the whole thing with Siggy. I I want her to be um, truthful. I want that mm-hmm. to be what's happening. But I also am a little worried. You're suspicious of. I am of it. I am suspicious of her. That's a really good word that mm. apparently I can't come up with on my own. <laughs> but that's exactly the right one. I am suspicious. <laughs> and I also thought it was a little weird that when she came in to offer herself to Lagertha, that her daughter didn't come with her. Mm. I kind of would have expected that. Can we serve you here mm-hmm. or both of us? Seems like less of an ask to take on one person into your household rather than two. I suppose. Or maybe it's just assumed. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I really love all the instances since Lagertha is so heavily pregnant. She touches her stomach every once in a while. Even during court, she when she's talking about the child, she kind of touches her stomach. She's obviously thinking about the baby. Yeah. And then Gita comes and gets into bed with her because she can't sleep. We find out that the seer has prophesied Ragnar is going to have many sons. And then Lagertha has a miscarriage. Yes. And it's really upsetting. It. She was far along. Yeah. It looked like she was basically almost a term well when in the beginning of that scene i thought she was just in labor Uh, when i heard her crying and sitting in the bed and stuff i I thought she was just in labor so what what did you think about all that when you realized i was really sad really sad i know lagertha is really sad i know ragnar is going to be Uh, just destroyed mm -hmm. and with the way that these people view their faith and their gods and their religion and stuff. I wonder if, you know, somehow it's going to be, we did something to make this happen. You know, we angered a God, Mm -hmm. you know, we shouldn't have killed the King's brother or we shouldn't have gone to England again, or, you know what I mean? And just some, they're Mm -hmm. going to try to give it a reason instead of just accepting that something went wrong. But that kind of thing must happen a lot. Oh, well, of course it must. I mean, even now, that happens, of course, all the time. Yeah, but I mean, she got so far. Mm-hmm. I just, I wonder what, and and I don't know, I I wonder if they're going to tell us what happened. Uh. I don't know. Are we just supposed to just accept it as something that happened? I was thinking, though, last episode when she said she was pregnant, I was like, how is that going to work? How so? Well, like, what are you going to do with a baby? I mean, you're not going on raids. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you're a new lady and you got a new Earl and... I don't know. Just babies are a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, running Kattegat while on 
I mean, you don't get paternity leave. Right, exactly. And who knows how long Ragnar is going to be gone. That's true. But you'd think he would want to come back in time for the baby. Mm, maybe. Because it seems like that's something that's pretty important. Yeah. He's very attached to his children. Maybe he was planning on coming back when the baby was born and that's another month away or whatever. Yeah. So he thought he had time and it's not like you can just send an email and say, by the way, can you come home? I lost the baby. <laughs> So. Ragnar's on the boat. Ping! <laughs> Look at this. My Wi-Fi is terrible here! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really sad. Really it sad. was. I really enjoyed that Siggy was, didn't even hesitate. She just went and held her and, and comforted her. I don't want to be suspicious of Siggy. I want yeah. her to be a good and faithful and loyal servant. Even though Lagrather said, I'm not going to treat you like a servant. But it, right. Lagertha, it's nice to have women friends. <laughs> you know? Well, that was probably pretty emotional for Siggy, too, since she had lost sons. Not yes. In, not with a miscarriage, but... Right, but still, she's lost mm -hmm. children. Definitely. I'm sure that was a big part of it. We get to Northumbria. We meet King Ayla's brother, Aethelwulf, and Lady Frey, apparently the king's wife. I like that her name was Frey. It made me think of Freya, the goddess. Yeah, yeah The Norse goddess. The Vikings build a pretty nice camp with really good defenses all around it. Yes, they do. And what a surprise. Ragnar and the Vikings are underestimated by the English. Again. Aethelwulf thinks he's going to outthink them, which he is very wrong about. Yeah, and then he's like... Oh, we're getting attacked. Maybe I should pray for 10 minutes? Oh my god. What was that what? about? Like, say a prayer and be done. Say it on your way, dude. <laughs> he finished praying just in time to get a tent down on his head. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Seemed pretty sheepish when he was just sitting there tied up. He didn't even get to fight anybody. No. That was really weird. So every time I see a lone guard going off to pee in a movie or a TV show. He did. They, they they get killed immediately. It seems like such a trope. Yup. <laughs> You're not allowed to go pee by yourself. No. You'll get killed. Yes. You need a pee buddy. Exactly. At all times. Yes. Because there are Vikings. Yeah. Who, they were, man, they snuck right in. And they're ruthless in every Arr. time. If every fight we've seen them in, they're like. There's no hesitation. No. They're just like, I'm going to use whatever I have in my hand to end your life. Because I don't want you to end mine. There was no, are you going to surrender? Nothing. No. Just in, kill, done. Yeah. Ragnar had some facial expressions that worried me. This oh, episode. like what? He just kept having this expression like he was amused. Yes. Like, like what was happening was fun or funny to him. Mm -hmm. Almost in sort of a manic kind of way. <laughs> I was worried about his control because... He seemed, in the same way that Floki sort of seems to me sometimes, that he's enjoying this violence too much. I saw that a, a totally different way than you did. Every time he smiled like that, it was at a point where he had the upper hand in the negotiations mm -hmm. that were going on, either explicit or implicit. It just made me think that he is so good at negotiation because what is what the number one uh, rule of negotiation is don't be the one that talks first, for one thing. He was really good at that, just waiting to be given what he wanted. And use the silence to make the other person talk first to fill the silence. Yep, he was really good at that. And too. that worked every time. Yes, it did. And I... Every time I saw him smile, I think he was just recognizing that he was winning. By He knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah. That's how I saw that. He was just so cocky. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, just really, yeah. But, I mean, regardless of me thinking that about him, I'm still on his side. And, you know, the, the, the life that they are accustomed to is fighting, is killing, is violent. So, I'll just assume that... That it's your opinion is the right one and that <laughs> because it's disturbing if it's mine. You should always assume that I'm I right. Should, I should always assume you're right. <laughs> In every facet mm -hmm. of your life. <laughs> Ragnar was surprised that the king's brother was the one commanding the army. Yes. And is taunting him about his brother with his sticking his crotch in his face. <laughs> yeah. Tacky. Oh, one little tidbit we saw was that uh, someone mentions the English's iron is better mm -hmm. Rolo than the Vikings. Does. Mm -hmm. And then he just chops the stump in half. Yeah, I feel like they're going to steal some of their, ah. some of the down men's weapons. 
Everyone was testing the weight of the swords, things yeah. like that. We go back to Ayla and the priest. They have all these reasons that the Northmen are there. The priest thinks it's because God sent them to pun- be punished. Some other man thinks it, the devil sent them. And somebody else thinks they should just pay them off. Nobody sent them. Mm-hmm. Which is what Ayla goes for. Yeah. Kind of. Sort of. He says yeah. he goes for it. Right. Does not really. I don't know why he thought that was going to work. Oh, my God. Talk, I mean, talk about underestimating him, for sure. Yeah. I felt bad for the Vikings that went off and checked the money. Yeah. The treasure chest to see if there was anything in them, because they obviously were getting killed, because they were not going to make it back right. to camp before the writers came and got them. But before that, the Vikings have a hostage, a very important hostage, mm-hmm. when they think. They get him to the gate. This was such a weird scene. They take him to the gate of the little kind of township they have. Just kind of show him mm-hmm. around, listen to the proposal, don't say anything, and leave. Yeah. That that poor English guy that was there. Was yeah. Like, so do you accept his proposal? <laughs> so, like, are you coming over for dinner or what? <laughs> he just kept talking and nothing was happening. Yeah. At that point, did you have any idea what was going on? No, I... I assumed at some point that at the very least Ragnar was going to go talk to the king, but I wasn't sure how he was going to do it without being surrounded by a bunch of people that could kill him. So at this point, Rollo is still being really rash, wants to attack. Yep. He's obviously not the strategist that Ragnar is. He's grown some facial hair to cover up his scars. He has. They've also faded some. They've healed. They've healed a lot. They finally go into the king's house. And almost in slow motion, Ragnar is taking everything in. Mm-hmm. The carpet, the people's clothes, the king leaning back in his seat. He is just soaking up everything he sees. He wants to be the king. <laughs> he, well, he even said he wants to know how they live. Yeah. I feel like he is like process improvement kind of person. If he had an office job now. Yeah. <laughs> he would be yeah. uh, all over the place trying to make everything efficient and better. Floki himself is just admiring the furniture and the plates. Oh my gosh. This table's really well made. (laughs) (laughs) When someone says, so are the women. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Which to me, I don't, I don't know about that because it seems like they would prefer the more sturdier women Mm -hmm. of the Vikings, but I guess everybody has a type and maybe they like somebody a little more delicate. Maybe. Maybe. They're probably easier to control. I'm sure. And rape. And but, that. Yeah. Because they probably don't carry knives. Probably not. Like the uh, women Vikings do. Uh-huh. Yeah. I did like the little moment when they met King Ayla's son, the yeah. shy little boy, mm-hmm. who was very different from Bjorn, how Bjorn would be meeting somebody. Definitely. And he had a weird name. Egbert? Eckbert, I think. Eckbert, Yeah. I thought that was an odd name. Also kind of young for a king that age. You would expect a king that age to have at least teenage children. Oh, yeah. Maybe he had other ones also that just didn't get introduced. Maybe. I loved when they all stopped eating when the prayer started and they realized nobody else was eating. They were just being stared at. Yes. And they called the singing a terrible noise. (laughs) (laughs) That is a terrible noise. man. Uh, we find out Ragnar wants 2,000 pounds in gold and silver. Which apparently is a lot. I did some calculations, and they seem like too much, but I'll tell you what they are. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I looked up the value of gold and silver in the Middle Ages. Okay. Apparently, it, and it didn't seem like silver was worth much less than gold. Somebody used the same calculations. Okay. But gold was worth about 3,000 in an ounce. Wow. Which is a lot more than it is now. It's like 850 an ounce or so. Wow. So 2,000 pounds is 32,000 ounces. So if we count silver and gold worth about the same, about 3,000 an ounce, that's $96 million. That can't be right. That's what I was thinking. That can't be right. But even a quarter of that is a massive amount of money. I mean, a million dollars would be yeah. insane. Mm-hmm. That can't be right. I know. I don't think so either. <laughs> Unless they just didn't do the calculations. 
like I did and just wanted to have a lot of money. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, because the priest did say, like, did I hear that right? <laughs> right. Everyone yeah. asked again. And and when the priest said, did I hear that right? I was like, oh, that must be a ton of money. But mm-hmm. then the king was like, I accept. And then I was like, maybe it's not that much. You know what I mean? I was like, mm-hmm. I thought that their reactions were in conflict. Well, and maybe he already had planned that there was no way he was going to give Well, him he that didn't money. play that very well then. He didn't negotiate he didn't try to negotiate the right. money. Right. I would have imagined he would have said no a thousand and Even if he was going to not give them any money, he still should have at least acted like he was going to. Do you think that that may have been a tip off for Ragnar? Uh yeah. I mean, I think Ragnar I think Ragnar's smart enough to see that that was maybe not likely but a possible scenario for sure. Well, I'm sure he noticed that they didn't try to negotiate, which he obviously is a good negotiator. Yeah. He's already, you know, he already started way before he got to talk to the king, negotiating well before that. Yeah, and then and then also the whole thing with the brother and how he didn't really see, the king didn't really seem to, to care that deeply about him. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Ragnar, I mean, Rolo definitely picked that up, but Ragnar was like, well, that's silly. Why wouldn't he love his brother? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Ragnar, open your eyes. I know. Oh my gosh, are you serious? But one of the conditions, which I do not understand why this was a condition, was that someone get baptized. Why? Did you have any idea? I have no idea why that. No. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, why would you want to bring somebody into a faith that doesn't believe in it? Right. Do you really think they're actually going to commit to it? No, you'd be mm-hmm. an idiot to think that. So I don't know if the priest is just like, the more baptisms I get, the better my chair in heaven is. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I thought that was really weird. Yeah. Well, I guess one of the big things about some religions like that is missionary kind of work and conversions. So maybe if they think that they can get someone baptized, then they'll spread the faith. But still, if it's not a serious conversion. Yeah. They don't even speak the same language. It's not like they're going to be able to tell him. Right. It's, yeah, it's, it was very strange. I also thought it was odd that nobody, especially the king, didn't ask when Ragnar said he also had a priest. Oh, yeah, nobody I cared. would have had some questions yeah. about that. Like, do you have a priest, like, as your friend? Or did you kidnap a priest? Because we heard about what you did to the other priests. Yeah. Seems like that might have come up. Unless you just didn't realize that he met a Christian priest. Oh, that could be. You maybe assumed it was... Maybe they thought it was a heathen priest. Right. If that's a thing. Is that an oxymoron? <laughs> I don't a know, heathen pre- priest. <laughs> <laughs> Were you surprised that Rollo volunteered to get baptized? Not not super surprised. I, I was kind of surprised at first when he set up, but then I was like, I think he knows that that's going to piss off Ragnar, which it did. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ragnar looked really angry about that. So, yeah. <sighs> oh, Rollo. Also, Rollo has learned some Anglo-Saxon. Yes. Go Rollo. <laughs> Almost as quickly as Ragnar. <laughs> this family must have a gift for languages. <laughs> He's been meeting with Apple Stand in secret. <laughs> yeah. He's been getting lessons. <laughs> I cannot imagine the two of them talking. I don't think they've had a conversation at all. Rolo and Apple Stand? Mm-hmm. No, I don't think so either. I don't think Rolo has res- the respect for Apple Stand mm-hmm. that Ragnar does. Mm-hmm. I don't think, I think he probably right. even thinks he's worth... A conversation. We get to the baptism, which I kind of liked that one was one of the few scenes with some nudity, even if it was just, you know, a topless man. I didn't mind the topless man. I also did not mind it. I liked to see his tattoos. I liked, yeah. yeah. His tattoos were a little hipster and the little stars on his Yeah. I dug it. Chest. Yeah. But yeah, it was nice to see it. But it's, I appreciate that they don't have a ton of nudity, even though there's a lot of sex. Right. It really distances itself from Game of Thrones. And yes. Have we seen like any naked women top? No. On top? I didn't think no. so. No breasts. Yeah. I don't think we've even seen any naked asses at all from anybody. I don't anybody. think so, yeah. The most we've seen is somebody wrapped in a blanket. Yeah. That was topless underneath, but yeah, we saw nothing. Yeah. So yeah, I appreciate that. Though, I, I will not turn down a few naked chests here and there. Yeah, I'm all right with Rolo taking his shirt off. <laughs> It must have been cold out there, too. Yeah. I mean, in the morning in England, Mm -hmm. in the water, man, that sounds really cold. Yeah, for the actor, I bet it was uncomfortable. But since he was a Viking, he should have been fine. Yeah, he acted very fine. Yeah. Also, he is very fine. He is fine. (laughs) (laughs) That's 
that's such a 90s word, too. <laughs> Boy, so you're so fine. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated that Ragnar kneeled when the king kneeled. Yeah. I thought it was kind of funny, though, the way he looked at him. How so? He was sort of like a side eye, like, oh, he's kneeling. Maybe I should kneel. Mm-hmm. And then he knelt and then he side eyed him again. Okay, we're still kneeling. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny. I, it seems like we can, we're watching him as he's learning the customs. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I really like to see that, that working in his head. And it, and it also reminds us that as confident as he is, there are times where he is looking to others to see how to act. Right. Because that's, is good for him. That that's going to work for him. It's easy to forget that he is not learned in all the ways of, of yeah, ruling. Yeah. Right. Because he is he seems so easy with it. Yeah. Definitely. And I I appreciate them putting in these little things like this mm-hmm. for us to remember that this is all new to him. Right. He's just really smart picking up on everything. There were there were two things also. And he's he's acting like a ruler. Mm-hmm. You know, he he knelt when the ruler knelt. He stood up as soon as he stood up. He was not going to be kneeling when the king was kneeling or when the king was standing up. Right. And also at the feast, he did not stand up when everyone else in the room stood up for the king. No. He stayed seated, and I appreciated that. He was showing that he is he considers himself to be equal to right. King Ayla. At least it yeah. seems that way. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that's what he was putting across also. So much interesting body language that just says so much. I like it. Yeah. Floki and Rolo have a little spat. Yes, they do. About renouncing the gods. Rolo is really upset. Okay, here's the thing too, though. I'm just going to say real quick. Mm-hmm. Rolo got baptized, but he did not say anything about renouncing the gods. No. I think that Floki's argument was... A little invalid because did Rollo ever say during the baptism, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I renounce Odin and Thor and all the gods. He never said any of that. He just went through the motions that were done to him even, really. So so I, I don't know that I think Floki's outrage is a little unfounded. And we know that, that from what we've seen that Floki is very, very devout. Mm-hmm. But Rolo never said any of that. And he says that he was joking, but he seemed pretty serious at the feast when he said he'd volunteer. He seemed serious to me, too. But then I also wonder how much of that was just for Ragnar's benefit. Just posturing. Just to make him mad. That's a good point. Because he didn't he didn't seem not confident during the baptism, but he also didn't seem into it. Right. And the way he acted at the feast... I expected him to be into it. Ah. So I think it was for show. Yeah. Okay. And I think that priest was crazy if he thought that Rollo was into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're saved by the money delivery before they actually fight. I mean, Rollo even walks up to him with an axe in his hand. So they're ready to go. Yep. But the money, or sorry, the treasure chests that have nothing in them get delivered. And then we get a fight scene. Mm-hmm. I loved Ragnar's arm raising gesture to bring up the hidden gate. It just made me think of yeah. the the um Night King in Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, he yeah. Raised yeah, yeah. his arms and all the yes. dead guys came down. Well yeah, they were just standing there and I was like, Oh, you guys need to get ready. They're yeah. coming. And then they raised and he put up his arm and they raised that and I was like, Oh, you guys. <laughs> you were ready. <laughs> <laughs> Man, there was some serious fighting. Somebody got a sword in the eye oh. at one point. It was gross. I liked their women fighting there. <gasps> oh, th- yes. Them. I made a note of that too. I was like, ah, oh, shield maidens. Yes, I love shield <laughs> there maidens. There are more of them. I was really I excited love hearing to see them, them yelling. Yeah. Yes. It's great. I would have liked another um, like Viking war chant, but I guess they didn't have time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love to see the women warriors. I was super excited about that. Rollo has a bit of a breakdown. The end of the battle seems yes, like he's overcompensating. He yeah. Do you think at that point he really regretted the baptism or was trying to make it up to the gods? It seemed like maybe. I don't know. I I I didn't really know why he was overdoing it so much. I don't know if he was sorry to the gods. If he was upset with the with agreeing to be baptized with himself maybe i didn't know if he just was like i'm really angry at ragnar and floki so i'm just gonna take it out on these saxons for me it seemed like it was he was just mad at himself for going along with it you think yeah he was just out of control and yeah 
He really was. It was very desperate. Yes. Because he kept slipping and then he just kept getting yeah. up and doing it again. It was kind of sad, actually. It was. It yeah. was pretty emotional. I think the most emotion we've seen from him. Yes, definitely. By far. Yeah. Oh, and then the old guy got to go to Valhalla. Yes. Oh, yeah. He seemed so happy. He was so happy. And Ragnar kissed him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was like, I'll see you when I get there, buddy. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That was a happy ending for him. It was. It was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Aetherwolf died. Yep. We didn't see him get killed. Uh, we saw him trying to convince Ragnar not, not to kill him. That obviously did not work. Yeah, I actually wasn't sure if he was dead. I thought maybe uh, they, like, just injured him pretty badly and then sent him back. I wasn't sure. There was sure. a lot of blood around his neck, so I'm pretty sure they slit his throat. Well, I think he, I agree that he's dead now, but mm -hmm. when they first showed him, I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they did another uh, money delivery with the cart and the guys ran away. I kept thinking it was too bad that the English hadn't met the Chinese at that point and had fireworks because I really wanted that whole thing <laughs> to just explode. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been awesome. That would have been a good way for them yeah. to kill some of them, I suppose. And Yeah, they don't yet have an explosion. Darn it, because, you know, mm -hmm. Ragnar would love... An explosion. Oh my god. He would be all about that. Because he likes cool, like, stuff. Like, experiments and new he likes technology. Fire. Yeah, just all that kind of stuff. Have you noticed in so many episodes, it shows him running his fingers over yeah. a flame? Yeah. And then even in this episode, when he walked by a, a brazier, brazier, how, what's it called? In the just the fire pit, kind of. Oh, okay. It's B-R-A-Z-I-E-R. -E it's one of those words I've only ever seen written. Brazier? Maybe, yeah, brazier. We'll I don't know. I think so. Yeah. It's like the thing that you wear under your shirt when you have boobs. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> oh, when he first goes in <laughs> to the king's house, I don't, I don't want to call it a palace because it's not a palace. Right. But definitely he, not. He walks, yeah, he walks by one of those and he runs his hands over it the same way that he oh. does with candles all the time. So I wonder if that's something about him just as a person or if it has something to do with the one of the gods or the faith or something. I feel like it's just one of his, his little mannerisms that he has. And I wonder if that's something that Travis Fimmel does or if it's written in. Yeah, I wonder if it makes him feel stronger because fire is so destructive. Mm -hmm. If he feels more powerful putting his hand in it. He's flirting with danger. Yeah, maybe it just gives him an extra boost. Because he was doing that when he was laying out trying mm -hmm. to get well. Maybe yeah. he wanted some more fortification. Yeah. I don't know. I like that that, that just keeps showing up occasionally. Yeah. Those are nice little pieces that sort of are a thread through it. Through it. So they take their... their treasure and they sail away sensibly back home we assume and king ayla is just on the hilltop swearing vengeance at rollo though it's his fault it's... that yeah that his brother died yes i don't even think he's mad about his brother i think he's mad yeah, about his true. money probably and that he got played yeah yeah i think he's mad that he got outsmarted or outfought or both i guess so question for you. Do you think that if Ayla had given them the money up front, they would have left? I don't know. I think it's hard to say if you give someone what they want when they are threatening you, what's to keep them from threatening you for more? But I think if they, if he had given them the money, the brother would have lived. Mm, yeah. I think they would have returned the brother. I don't know if they would have left, but I think they would have given the brother back. So they ended up losing the brother and the money, which was stupid of them. Yeah. It's also one of those kind of enabling things where if you give someone something they want because they're threatening you and they take it and leave, what they're probably going to come back because they know sure. that you They'll will now more. give them what you want. So it also kind of invites them to return. Yeah. I don't know if the king and his army, I don't know if there was a good solution. Yeah. But... He was screwed either way. But I think he took some bad steps. Definitely. Next week, we're going to talk about season one, episode eight, called Sacrifice. Oh, jeez. Okay. What do you think about that? Well, I think somebody's going to die. <laughs> and they're going to be the sacrifice, but I don't okay. know who and who the sacrifice is to. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, even though it's been so long since I've seen the first season, uh -huh. I remember that episode and I love it. Okay, great. 
It's really, it's just so interesting to watch. I'll probably watch it today, actually, after this. Okay. But I might have to watch it again right before we record next time. There's a lot going on, but it's, there's some, some scenes that really stuck with me. Well, so I'm hoping that we're going to see a Ragnar and Lagertha reunion. Okay. Um, I think Lagertha needs Ragnar mm. right now mm-hmm. to help her get through this, uh, the grief of losing the baby. And I, and I still wonder if something's going to come about where losing the baby is because of something else having to do with the gods uh, and the mm-hmm. wrath or whatever. And if that's, if that's true, maybe we need to make a sacrifice to appease the gods. They're obviously mad they killed my baby. I need to, you know, I don't know. But I feel like the, their faith is strong enough in their lives that it could go that direction. Okay. I don't know who's going to die, and I'm not sure who I'd be okay with dying. Oh. I don't want Siggy to die. Obviously, I don't want Ragnar or Lagertha or their kids to die. I don't think Rolo's going to die whether I want him to or not. (laughs) Just sticking around like a sore thumb. I still think there's going to be a big brother standoff. Not big brother. A large large. brother's (laughs) standoff. Mm -hmm. Um, Definitely. So... I don't know. I'm, I I really don't have a good prediction because I'm just not sure where they're gonna go with it. I feel like I'm that way a lot with this show because because there's no there's no story in my mind from history or otherwise uh, to follow. Mm-hmm. This could go anywhere. I do like historical fiction that I don't know about. Well, yeah, I'm not and, familiar with the story. And even if you did a lot of research, you've done some, and it seems like. Even if that was the case, you still, it's all just rumors and hearsay. So there's some really interesting stuff in the history that there's no way I'm going to tell you about. Ah. It does come to pass. Boo. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But there are a lot of things that it it could go all over the place. Well, I'll just say to you and to our listeners, I feel like the chances of me being correct on any I predictions (laughs) is probably about 6%. (laughs) And that's generous. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea where they're going with this. It's really interesting to listen to your predictions and see what you notice about the episodes. Mm. Because there are already some things that we've seen this season that come back a long time later. Oh, good. Okay. I like when that happens. Yeah. And you may you may have forgotten about them by that point. That's true. And you'll be like, oh my god, I remember this one line the person said or... This one thing that happened and now it's all circling back around. Yeah, I'll definitely have to make sure when I'm taking notes when I'm watching if things that I remember from the past yeah. seem like they're coming back. And, you know, you have to be careful, too, um, when you're watching uh, previously on. Oh. Because when you <laughs> when you watch... It tells you what's going to happen. Yeah. Let's say you're watching the second or third season of a show mm-hmm. and they say previously on and then they show you a scene from the first season. Yes. You're like, okay, but now I kind of know. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I, I usually try to skip the previously ons, not for that reason, but just because it's not been that long since I watched it and I just want to go back into it. What? The worst is when you see a previously on and you see a character you that was only in a show once maybe mm-hmm. and you're like... Now I know who's going to die or something like that. It ruins the surprise. This is slightly off topic, but I have been watching Criminal Minds on Netflix. I've been marathoning it hard. Which is like a two-year marathon because it has, what, 800 episodes? Okay, here's the thing. Uh, I think there are 11 seasons on Netflix. Oh my god! And I think the 12th season is on TV right now, but I don't have TV. Um, Holy crap. So there are 11 seasons on Netflix. I started watching it... <laughs> At the end of January, and I'm in season 10, <laughs> oh and there are, there are like 21 episodes a season. Holy crap. I can't even stop. I can't stop. So, so at this point, are you dreaming about Criminal Minds? Like, how do you even? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> And so here's the thing too. So, so you'll be watching and they'll, and like, say it's like season nine previously Mm -hmm. on Criminal Minds. And they'll be talking about this criminal that like murdered a bunch of women and cut out their tongues and burned their feet and ripped off their eyelids or whatever. And then got away or something. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like previously on, you're like, that happened six seasons ago. This guy's back. (laughs) So... I've I've been uh Or for you, it happened last week. That's true. Because for me I remember it mm-hmm. a lot easier because it's only been 
it really hasn't been a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and also, it's very scary to watch that show. Now, this might sound sexist, but I'm a woman, Uh-oh. and my husband's a man, and I and he carries a gun. So, I consider him the protector of our house, right? Ah. Uh. Well, I watch Criminal Minds when he's not home. And, um... <laughs> Mostly it's all about murdering women who are at home oh. alone. Uh, oh, <laughs> so, so I get really, like, uh, nervous. And so I'll call my husband and say, can you please remind me of the um, combination of our gun safe? Just no reason. Ask him for a friend. Uh, <laughs> so I actually, Because I'm watching a scary yes, show. So I could defend myself. I do know how to get the guns and I do know how to shoot one of them and really what are the chances of someone breaking into my house and killing me while i'm watching a show about a house being broken into and people getting killed oh my god i think that someone needs to write a show about a serial (laughs) killer no listen a serial killer who works in if these still exist who works in a movie rental place oh my god someone (laughs) whenever someone rents a horror movie they they go kill him he goes and kills them. And so it's the perfect, they're already scared. Oh they're already looking gosh. around and worried. And he just plays it up. Oh that would be amazing. God. That would be wonderful. That would be horrible. Somebody make this. That would go against everything that makes me feel okay about watching these shows. Because the right chances straight. are so slim. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Now I'm not going to be able you're to even welcome. watch it anymore. <laughs> just don't tell anyone that you're watching it. And then it should be okay. That's good. That's, yeah. That's the statistician thing. from Netflix is coming to your house as a serial <gasps> killer. Can you imagine if you worked for Netflix and you watched what everybody watched and then you came and killed them in a way that is what they always watch? That would be amazing. Because that actually sounds a lot like it could be a Criminal Minds episode, really. Because they've been on for, you know, 12 seasons, so they have had to come up with a lot of really interesting ways to murder people. So. Now they have one more. That's right. The Netflix statistician. Statistician. What is it? Statistician. Statistician. That's not right either. (laughs) Statistician. There you go. I like it. I could never be that job because people would say, what do you do? And I'd be like, I run numbers. Oh, a statistician? Oh, yeah, that's it. A statistician. (laughs) All right, Rosanna, what's your category for top three this week? Uh, top three times I laughed out loud during this episode. Oh, nice. That's a nice change from unnecessary deaths. I and- agree. I agree with that fully. Because there is an awful lot of violence in this show. But mm-hmm. I I really did laugh out loud a couple of times because there were some really, really funny scenes. And they all were during the time of the Vikings interacting with the Saxons. Okay. Because I don't know if you picked up on this, but they're pretty different sort of people their traditions and and behavior not not quite the same (laughs) so number one at the feast the food is served the vikings go full pig at a trough (laughs) shoveling food into their mouths and the saxons are all sitting around like these people are animals we haven't even prayed yet are you serious (laughs) so that one made me laugh just the expressions on their faces Mm mm-hmm so the second time was also at the feast. Uh, Floki bites the plate. Yeah. Because I guess he wants to know how strong it is. And then he breaks it. And then a guy <laughs> a couple people down breaks his plate. And then they're all... On, over his head. Yeah. They're all just laughing at all these broken plates. So Ragnar's laughing. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, he's telling them in, in Viking language, Norwegian. Old Norse. Old Norse, sorry. To stop making him laugh because he's trying to be serious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought oh, that was I so, like that. Hey, you guys, stop it, stop it. It's like teenagers. <laughs> stop it, I'm trying to be serious. <laughs> I, I really loved that one. That was really fun. And then, of course, number three. Pretty much the entire baptism was hilarious. Oh, my God. But when the priest is trying to anoint Rolo with the oil, and he keeps... <laughs> And he's running his hand closer to him, and Rolo just keeps backing up. He hasn't moved his feet. He's just leaning, 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 leaning. And he's so tall, the priest (laughs) having a hard time reaching him. So he finally gets to annoy him, and Rolo's like, what are you even doing? Don't put that on me. (laughs) Then he tries to dunk him, and Rolo's like, all right, I guess, whatever. Then he comes out, and the priest tries to hug him. And he's like, (laughs) dude, stop touching me. (laughs) Oh, 
And and you know how I feel about Rolo, but I loved him in that scene. He was so funny. Yes. My favorite part of that was when he was coming out of the water and he shook his head like a dog coming in <laughs> from the rain. Yes. I, I would love to see that in like slow motion, like super hot. Yeah. Oh, model yeah. Model guy coming out of the water. Yeah. Except it was really awkward looking. That was really fun. I liked that. Yeah. I, that actor, he did a good job mm-hmm. in that scene. It was... It was, like, sufficiently awkward, but also so humorous. Yeah. I just loved it. So that's my top three this week. Nice. Do you have any predictions about what we're going to see next week or for the rest of the season? Mm. We've only got two episodes left this season. Oh, really? Yeah. I feel like I was surprised when you told me that last time, too, and I'm still surprised. Mm -hmm. Um, So only two episodes. Yeah, sacrifice and then one more. Yeah, I guess we're getting into the, uh, maybe we're going to have a cliffhanger. Ah. between seasons i would i would guess a lot of times especially of a new show the end of the first season they're gonna want to bring you back Mm. so i'm gonna guess maybe something of a cliffhanger though i'm not sure who it's going to be it could be a standoff between ragnar and rollo if they get back to Mm. um Kattegat. Kattegat. yeah if they get back and Ragnar starts ruling and Rolo doesn't like mm. to be ruled, as we've seen, maybe there's going to be a, a confrontation there, which might leave us hanging at the end. I think, or at least I hope, Ragnar's going to spend some time at home and not go right back out. Uh, yeah. Uh, spend some time with Lagertha, spend some time with the kids. I'm interested to see what his reaction to Siggy living with Lagertha is. Oh, yeah. I'd l- I... I'm not sure how he's going to feel about that. I I would hope that he is glad that Siggy was there to support Lagertha during the miscarriage. But he also could be sort of the same way Bjorn was where, hey, her husband tried to kill me. What are you doing? I found it really interesting. They had the kind of half an episode where there had been a time jump and Lagertha was more pregnant. Yes. And they were all in the longhouse. But there was no mention of Siggy. I really wanted to see at that point what Siggy and Rolo were. If they were public, if they weren't, what was going and, yeah, on? Yeah, and also, where was she living? It's not like they had another house or yeah. or did they? I don't know. And she was the lady, but didn't she have ladies or friends or mm-hmm. or was it just her? I mean, was she completely alone besides yeah, theory? She may have just had slaves. So does she get to keep the slaves or did they have to go to Ragnar? I don't know. I don't know either. You saw that she was stealing a whole bunch of jewelry while taking it. So maybe she's been using that to live. Uh, I guess. And and I feel like in this kind of show, we probably aren't going to find out. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm pretty sure we don't. Okay. Because uh, this doesn't, it doesn't seem like we're going to get a flashback for Siggy. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what I mean? I mean, she's just, yeah, we're not going to get that. So I guess we'll just have to wonder. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I would like to see what Ragnar's reaction to Siggy being there is. Ah, uh, yeah. Now it's time for Cheek of the Week, where we talk about something that we like. My Cheek of the Week is totally appropriate when we're talking at the feast. It is uh, these wine charms. They're Trudeau floral wine charms. They go on wine glasses, and they're these little flowers, all different kinds of flowers. There's a pack of 12 that you get. They have it on Amazon. They're really pretty. They have the calla lilies and daisies and all different kinds of uh, flowers in there. But they're super nice. And I give them often as uh, host gifts when I go to dinner parties and things like that. Not like I go to dinner parties very often. That (laughs) seems very, very high class. That's a very nice hostess (laughs) gift for all those dinner parties you get invited and go to, Nikki. So when I go to my (laughs) in-laws for for Hanukkah or something, (laughs) then I give them things like that. Uh, but I've actually given them to a whole bunch of people that seem to like them. And I have some myself as well. Uh, but they're really nice and they last a long time. They, they're all bendy and fun. That might also yeah. be a good, like, engagement gift to go with if you got somebody wine glasses. Oh, yeah. That or would be really gift, nice. Something like that, yeah. And yeah. I was thinking, too, also when you were describing those as they hook to themselves, you could also do mm-hmm. that with a mug around oh, the that's handle. that's true. If, if it was, like, coffee after dinner or something. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to really class up your frat party, you can just cut a little hole in your red solo cups and put them oh like that. you just need a, a hand hole punch yeah yes that would super be nice super classy mm-hmm. nikki way better than writing your name on the side of the cup with, with a, a sharpie. sharpie yeah i agree not that i've ever been to a party like that mom if you're listening <laughs> <laughs> i also have never been to a party like that or thrown a party like that oh i definitely have never thrown a party like that <laughs> 
You can tell the difference between my live voice and my truth voice, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've been to some of your parties. Uh, I think I remember solo cups. Oh my gosh. That was like so long ago, though. <laughs> I'm sure it was never when I was underage and you were buying alcohol for me. I didn't buy alcohol for you. Well, Did you I? didn't stop me from drinking alcohol. All right. Well, that's kind of different. It's totally different. I didn't commit any crimes. Are you sure? Mm, uh, I think we should stop recording if we want to continue this conversation. Just, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't want to be on an audio tape that is put out admitting to a crime admitting to a crime exactly yes when when your husband is in law enforcement oh i would like to see him try to arrest me <laughs> even with his gun i know the <laughs> safe combination i could have a gun too oh my god this is not gonna end well <laughs> there's a firefight in your also he turned 21 before i did so i'm pretty sure he committed a crime by oh, supplying my oh, oh. liquor to me as a minor oh, so man just goes deeper and deeper that's right this is a very corrupt family we're kind of like the mob (laughs) (laughs) yeah just like that (laughs) just like the mob (laughs) what's your cheek rosanna my cheek of the week (laughs) doesn't really have anything to do with vikings except for the fact that they probably didn't have toilet paper but would have liked to oh probably probably so my cheek (laughs) at one point ragnar (gasps) ragnar did take a number two uh huh. Yeah. Or leave it. No I toilet guess. paper. Yeah. No toilet paper. So anyway, <laughs> my cheek of the week is Amazon's dash buttons. They're little buttons that you order that are sticky on one side, and they connect to your Wi-Fi. And you stick them anywhere in your house you want, and when you push the button, two days later something shows up from Amazon on your doorstep. And nice. my favorite thing to order is toilet paper, <laughs> <laughs> and it's because. There are a lot of people that live in my house and we go through toilet paper fast enough to where it seems like I was buying it all the time. And Mm. I hate buying toilet paper at the store because you go and do you remember to get it? And it's big and it takes up a lot of room and it's on the bottom of your cart. And it's, these are really first world problems that I'm dealing with right now. (laughs) But Amazon has created this way for me to just push a button when we're out of toilet paper. Well, not when we're out. Obviously, if we're out, I have to go to the store. (laughs) But when I take, like, one out and there are only two left, I just go hit the button. It's hanging in my pantry. And then two days later, I've got toilet paper on the front porch. I didn't have to go buy it. I didn't have to remember more than that one second, which is about as long as I can remember something. Yay for dash buttons. Yay! And dash buttons, they also have for toothpaste, garbage bags, and laundry soap, and batteries, and coffee, and pet food, and tons of stuff that you want to buy regularly that it's really easy to run out of. Mm. So you just hang them up wherever. My laundry soap one is actually stuck to my washing machine. So as oh, soon nice. as I put in a, you know, a little pod and I only have one or two left, I just hit the button. And then like 10 minutes later, you get an email from Amazon confirming your order. So you could actually... Um, cancel it at that point if you have a silly little kid that's like I ordered 17 orders of toilet paper (laughs) Um, you can cancel that so it's super convenient I love it so much I totally recommend if you get that kind of stuff pretty frequently and it's Mm -hmm. starting to be a pain just go on to Amazon and I think you can just search dash buttons and you can see all of the different brands that you can get stuff from Super yeah, cool. they always show up on my homepage, all the yeah. dash buttons. They actually even have one that if you push it, you just get a random selection of, like, sweets. Oh. Like, they just send you not get that dash candy button. or cookies or something, but you don't pick what you're getting. They just send you. It's like an Amazon select or something. An Amazon help me gain weight dash <laughs> button. <laughs> exactly. Amazon, I'd like to gain four pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Please send it to my house so I don't even have to walk to my car. <laughs> <laughs> to eat the candy. Thank you. Oh my god. Yeah. So that's a really good one. I recommend that one. Uh, so listeners, you can find links to all of our Cheeks of the Week. And you can send us your questions on our website, somethingcheekypodcast.com. That's our episode. Please leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. It really helps to spread the word. And follow us on Twitter at Some Cheek. You can also check out our other podcasts where we talk about the very good book, The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. It's getting really good. Yes, it is. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.